why behind it. Yes. But with a name like Kitchen, you can imagine when I was at school <laughs> and I said I wanted to become a chef, you know, like uh, I used to get, you know, the Mickey taken at me quite a lot. But he was laughing now, you know, so it was, it was like it was written in the stars with a name like Kitchen, I was going to be a chef. But really, it all started when I was um, started washing the dishes in the local pub when I was 13, 14 years old. And, um, I kind of just fell in love with the adrenaline, the excitement of working in the kitchen, you know, the team spirit. And uh, that's kind of what set me on the road in this culinary journey, shall we say. I've always been very driven with the restaurants, you know, I've always believed and I've always had it drummed into me from a, a young apprentice that you're only as good as your last meal. You can never relax, you, you always have to deliver day in, day out. You never know who's coming through. So I've always lived on the edge, you know, from day one when we opened the restaurant to today, 16 years down the line, I still live on the edge of who's coming in the restaurant today. Who's that? Are they going to be, are they going to find it special? Is that regular coming? What can we do to make it special? It's exactly the same. It's just now the operation is much bigger. Is the weight heavier now? Was it heavier right at the beginning? I'm not sure. It's a different kind of pressure. But it's exactly the same. It's all about trying to deliver something really special every day. I think the outside looking in, um, you know, people think, wow, all these restaurants, all this kind of stuff. But they also see an infrastructure that, you know, yes, Michaela, myself, we were there at day one building this dream of ours. But now very much, we couldn't do this without all the people in the team. We've got so many people who have been with us for years and years. We always try to promote from within to create a career path for people who, you know, live and breathe the philosophy. All the different businesses, people have come through mainly the kitchen restaurant or or through other businesses, and they have the philosophy of what we we live and die by. You know, and it's just so now. I'm you know I'm becoming a, an older entrepreneurial chef. I find it really rewarding to see the next generation and the way that they're embracing it and coming through and, and seeing them to take control as well and watch them fly, it's really beautiful. These young people, that was me one day, you know, you've got that grit, that determination, you want to create something, you want to do something, you want to work hard. And, you know, we live in a world where, you know, we're always saying, oh, young people this, they don't want to work this, that. There is still these people out there, these wee gems that give you the, you know, the will to carry on. I really like that. most humbling moment oh wow there's been so many I mean I think first of all there's been many but like the opening of the, the businesses um, I remember funny things like I remember when Michaela in the early days taking the calls and saying I'm sorry we're fully booked would you like to go on the waiting list I mean like that was like yes you know we have a waiting list <laughs> you know there's been so many big iconic moments right here of course winning the Michelin star and winning it every year because you need to win it every year for 16 years so that's a great achievement but then you know the successes of all the other businesses the Scranton Scallies become iconic um, you know the Bonnie Badge is very special I'm so proud of Cora now um, there's been so many ups and downs and that is part of the roller coaster of this of this world I mean challenges there's there's been so many challenges over the years. if you go back to my younger days the challenges of working in you know very grueling kitchens very hard kitchens highs and lows um, those were massive challenges because it would have been easy to give up it would have been easy to leave not work in paris not work in monte carlo not work in london for these big chefs in a country where you don't speak the language it would have been easy just to go home so those were challenges and overcoming them. that definitely made me stronger as a person and as a chef and a, a better all-round person i think then the challenges of opening the restaurants you know becoming a restaurateur, becoming a leader. And then we go on on this incredible journey, which is high and low. And then, then there's a the challenging of managing people. So many times young people, you know, they, they, they think that they can't carry on and they don't want to do something. And you just need to sit them down and give them a pep talk and try and get them over that bridge because the next day will be another day and everything's else. Suddenly the next day is much better. So that's always been a challenge. And the biggest challenge that we faced as, as business owners and restaurateurs was going through the pandemic. It was something that we'd never visualized, we'd never knew anything about it. And without the support of everyone in the business and different people, I don't know how we would have got through that. 
there's many things you learn. You learn a lot about yourself, about becoming a leader. Nobody teaches you to become a leader, to become a manager. No one teaches you these things, you know? And that is a big thing, you know? Learning to work with people. Everyone is an individual now, so treating them indi individually. These are the things that you learn as a manager, uh, as, a, as a chef, and a, an owner. Of course, look. Hospitality, chefing has changed dramatically over the years. Um, but like every industry, you know, it's changed. And I, I, deep down, I really think it's changed for the better. You know, we're, we're really conscious of, uh, you know, welfare of the staff, looking after the staff, you know, hours, um, pay, um, accommodating needs. These are really important things. You know, when, you know, I'm not saying I didn't get that when I was a young chef, but that was just the way it was. But I guess it was the same whether you were in newspapers, whether you worked in banking or whatever, you know, the industry has changed dramatically. But the deep rootedness of love of food is something that's never changed. You know, the, the love of food, the, the joy that food brings to people's lives, the joy of instantaneous feedback that you get from customers, the joy of sitting down with your family and eating something freshly cooked and eating it, that, that hasn't changed and that will never change. There's not a day I wake up and I think, do you know what, I don't want to go to work today. Because I live and breathe what I do with food. Whether it's going to a school and cooking with some kids, whether it's going to the farm and getting the freshest new vegetables, whether it's creating a new dish with some chefs, or whether it's coming to eat on a Sunday with my family, you're thinking non-stop about food. How can it be better? What should we do there? How do that? It's a complete and utter lifestyle. Because originally Cola was a restaurant called Southside, which, and then we had this terrible flood, and then like we talked about there, we went through the terrible pandemic. So Cora, uh, Southside was wrapped up for like two and a half years. There was a very dark moment for us as a, as a family, as restaurateurs, for our staff, for our business. It was a terrible time. The thought of reopening, we wanted to create something new and exciting. Something that was like the rebirth, you know, it was like spring springing up, you know, it was like new energy. And over this period as well, we really started to work with like different vegetable growers and farmers. And, you know, my whole philosophy has always been from nature to plate, knowing exactly where the produce was. But now it's even becoming a little bit lighter and stuff. And I felt, we felt, myself and Michaela, we felt that there was something missing in the, the neighborhood here. It was a kind of like proper neighborhood restaurant. And the kind of place you come, to, you come to every day as a local and you, you, you feel like you're just home. You know, you're home, you, you, you leave the troubles of the world at the door, you come in, you eat really good food, you know where it's coming from, well-priced, great drinks, well-priced, wine by the glass, nice, good neighborhood restaurant. And um, we take great pride in it. And the food is, it feels lighter, it feels a little bit more energized vegetation-wise, it's, it's just got a lot more zing about it. And it's something different to the other restaurants that we have. So we're really excited about it. And it's a rebirth from the, from the hardship and it's like, do you know what? We're still here and we're still fighting and we're not giving up. And this is now how we're coming back. The fight back starts here. So we're working with um, some great vegetable growers on the, so two brothers actually on the south side of Edinburgh called the Free Company. And um, literally you get the information weekly of what's coming into season and that kind of stuff. Just now we have the amazing courgette flowers. Okay, we have cool rabbi just coming in season, the young tomatoes are coming in, they have these big beef tomatoes that will be there soon, sugar snap peas, peas, broad beans, um, runner beans, you know, it, it's green, it's light, it's summery, but already I'm thinking, all right, okay, soon we're going into mushroom season, so it's wild mushrooms, which are just the little chanterelles, those are amazing. Before we know it, it will be August, September, and the game will be starting, the game season, the grouse, the pheasant, the partridge. So you've got to be on the ball, you've got to be thinking, you've got to be ahead of the game. Um, and it's a really exciting thing because really we just want to connect the different products that come into season at the same time. So the grouse comes into season, the wild mushrooms come into season. It's normal that they come together on the plate as well. I think guests, of course, guests have changed in the, you know, over the year, like we have as well as people, as humans. As, you know, but at the end of the day, they still want good food, they want good pricing, they want good hospitality, they want to feel comfortable. But I think the guests, you know, they're, they're starting to understand, finally they're starting to understand that, you know, we're not, 
we're not buying battery chickens, you know, that cost one pound fifty a chicken, or you know, we're buying properly sourced product. This is this comes at a, a, a price as well, you know. But it, it's about sourcing. It's about knowing where it's from. They want to eat seasonal. They want to know what they're eating. They want to know where it comes from, and they're kind of embracing exactly the same philosophies as well. There's still work to be done, but it's there, and it's it's really starting to come forward. Of course, you know, people are living in a world of social media. I mean, everyone, as soon as they get their food, they want to get a picture, they want to post the picture, they, you know, it's that whole world that we live in as well. So there's a lot of pressure in that sense as well, because if someone loves something, great, they post it. But then if they don't like it, they post it as well, which is heart hurtful. You know, we're, we, we, we care about what we do. We wear our heart on our sleeve. And, uh, you know, when someone doesn't like it, it's like, ah, you know, so that's the way it is. And, uh, just be strong we believe in what we do we believe in ourselves we be true take feedback on board but um, just be true to our roots um yeah like this one just now that we do is make it like what we call a, a consomme a red berry consomme so we kind of just take the, the, the berries that are not perfect and we slowly bring them up to the boil with a wee bit of sugar and lemon slowly bring the berries up to the boil and as they boil, start to come up, all the liquid comes out of the berries. We simmer, and then what we do is we put it in a muslin cloth. We put all the liquid inside, we tie it tight, and then we hang it like this from the shelf in the fridge, and a pot underneath, really importantly. And what happens is all the natural essence of the berries drips out into this clear liquid, you know? So it's very old fashioned cooking, you know, it's kind of thing that in the olden days used to be granny's tights, you know? And uh, it's, um, it's really nice, I like that. So you serve that as a dessert, it, like pour it at the table, like just this pure um, red berry essence. <coughs> I think I think if you if you want a real taste of um, you know what's seasonal and great in Scotland just now, in a really great environment, in a fuzzy environment, in a beautiful part of Edinburgh, you've got the meadows here, then Cora is the place for you to come and check it. Like that. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. You know, we really hope to welcome some of your uh, readers to the restaurants. Thank you very much. I'm sure they will be definitely persuaded to come. Yeah. <laughs>